Today, there are over 800 Pokemon. What's a Melmetal? Despite this fact, among those over 800 Pokemon are some Pokemon that just don't get enough loving. I'm Kyle Bossman. This is the top 10 most underappreciated Pokemon. Now, before we start, we got a, c a couple of criteria. Uh, one, if you're underappreciated, you can't be like strategically viable. You can't be top tier. You have to be bottom tier. Nobody's putting you in their team for the sake of strategy. Number two, you can't be like one of Ash's Pokemon. You can't be a star. You can't have you know, the, this whole episode where Ash like has to cry because he's got to let you free. You know what I mean? These Pokemon don't get that kind of attention. And that's it. Number 10. Number 10 is my favorite Pokemon of all time. Obviously, I want this Pokemon to be higher on the list, but I have to recognize my own bias. This Pokemon is, of course, Farfetch'd. Farfetch'd is just a duck. Farfetch'd is a duck with this thing. It's a, it's a, it's, it's officially a stick. Originally, they were willing to call it like an onion sprig, and then it was called a plant stick, and then it was called, most recently, it's called a plant stalk. They don't know what kind of plant it is. It's just a hard plant. Here's the cool thing about Farfetch. Yeah, it's just a normal duck with this one stick that it's always carrying around. It cannot live without that stick. Apparently, if Farfetch drops the stick and is without the stick, it will die. And so when it does, hey, the stick's gonna go somewhere. Farfetch just leaves. Farfetch leaves until it finds a new stick. That's really cool. We need to appreciate this kind of Pokemon. And it has a cool name. It's Farfetch apostrophe D. Why? It, there's nothing too far-fetched about the character, like, you know, like, like a wheezing could have been called far-fetched. This thing's just a duck. What were they thinking? I gotta know. There's a mystery to far-fetched. Number nine! Number nine, Jumpluff. Now, Jumpluff is a bad Pokemon. If you read the Pokedex entries from Gold and Silver all the way up until today, all of them for some reason mention, like, it just f floats around in the wind. That's all they, they have nothing to say about this thing's personality. Look at this poor thing. It's jolly. You don't want it in your living room because I think... I think it's gonna give you allergies. But why I'm asking you to care more about Jumpluff is that it still smiles, right? It is it is not in control of its own life too much. It's just blowing in the wind. It's, it's going wherever the wind takes it. And I guess it apparently does have some control over where it lands. It's still happy. It's still happy despite these things. It's still happy despite the fact that nobody wants it. That it's not gonna appear in your party. That nobody wants that card. When you open a Pokemon trading card game pack and Jumpluff is your star, you're mad. And I'm saying, look, sometimes we need a Jumpluff. Number eight! I don't think the wildly jolly Pokemon get enough credit. Look at Huntail. Look at this guy. He is wild. This is a wild party monster. Look at his tail, it's shaped like a fish. What he does is he wiggles that little tail. And then he lures in predators that he would then chomp on. Apparently, he's not very good at swimming. You can see why. Huntail, I think, was added to just occupy the below ocean space. Right, if you're going to be able to dive, you need something under there. Let's put a Huntail in there. But look at this grin. Look at this big open mouth grin. And tell me that's not a star. This boy is a star. Put him on the box, right? Put him on your t-shirt. Number seven. There's some Pokemon I feel like they just, they were released in the wrong time. Look at this big guy, Caracosta, Caracosta. It's a big old, big old ancient tortoise who walks around on his back legs. And like, it's cool he can walk around, right? It's cool that there's a turtle that can walk on its hind legs, but they didn't give him arms. They just gave him these big old flappy turtle wings. And I was thinking like, okay, yeah, this is an appropriately useless Pokemon. Apparently, if you read the Pokedex entries, it uses those wings to slap. I guess I should call them fins. It's slapping with those fins. Uh, let me read an entry real quick. It could knock out a foe with a slap from one of its developed front appendages and chew it up, shell or bones and all. So this big boy, he's coming around slapping you with his wings and then just eats you up, shell or bones and all. In fact, there's another one that particularly mentions Omastar and Almanite. You know, because Caracosta comes from a shell, right? It's basically following that pattern of, of, of the old uh, uh, fossil Pokemon. And so the, in the in the Pokedex entry, they're trying to say, look, look, it can even eat an Almastar. Like, trying, like it's obviously Almastar is more popular. Obviously, everyone likes Almanite more than Caracosta. But look at this big turtle. It's a big ancient turtle. Why don't we love him? Number six. Quagsire. Quags I mean, look at Quagsire. Quagsire's plain. Sure. 
Quagsire is a big plain Pokemon. Not a lot going on in in, in this in this brain. And, and it's actually clear, like it, it's intentionally a dense, dumb Pokemon. Apparently it just likes to bump into rocks. But I think we need to see the value in that. You know, not every Pokemon's gonna be Charizard, our best friend who like looks at us meaningfully. You're never gonna get a meaningful look from Quagsire, but it still belongs in a party, right? It, it, you need components in a party. You can't have six meaningful looks. When you get through the Elite Four and you're looking at your team and you're like, we did it. I think you kind of need somebody there to be like, yeah, but this is still pretty silly, right? And that is what Quagsire represents. Number five! There are some Pokemon that are just based off animals, right? And there's just some animals that are, are huge in the animal kingdom. We love them. And then they, you would you would think that they'd be loved Pokemon. L like Rapidash, it's a fire horse. We love that thing. Don't you think a bear would be beloved? Don't you think Ursaring should be one of the most popular Pokemon of all time? It's not. First of all, I think the name's bad. I get Ursa for bear ring because there's a big old circle on its belly. What if thing was? What if? What if it was called like Griznar? Right? Think of this thing called Griznar, and I think you suddenly like it a little more. It's just I think the head's too small. If you look at Bear Tick, an appropriately disliked Pokemon, very small head. If you look at, at, at Beware, big head. Everybody loves it. Head size is a lot of times proportionate to how beloved a Pokemon is. But what I need you to think about is how cool it is that you can catch a bear in a ball, that you can just catch a big old bear with big claws and put that in your team. Use that bear to fight your friend's creatures. It's a bear. Don't forget about that. Forget it's called Ursa Ring for a second. Pretend it's called Mama Claws, right? And then we like this thing. Number four. I love Pokemon that come from space. You know, I love Clefairy. I, I, I love even what it's called, Minior. I love that guy. I love Starmie and Staryu. Think about Soul Rock right now. Look how cool this thing is. Don't think about Lunatone, because here's the thing. Soul Rock and Lunatone right next to each other in Pokedex. It's like, hey, we got two V2 battles. You're gonna wanna you're gonna want both of these things. Think about it singularly. How cool is this thing by itself? Apparently it's like rumored it comes from the sun. Obviously that's not true. I think it's 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 kind of cute. It represents how little the people in the Pokemon world understand about their universe, but it definitely came from space. This cool sun rock came from space. It doesn't ever change its expression, but it knows when you're thinking. It's a cool space Pokemon. Where'd this thing come from? I gotta know. Number three! Do you ever have a friend who thought Dragonite was cool? I think we all had a friend who just is like, you're just looking at your friend, and you're like, no, it's just a big, dumb, jolly dragon. It's not cool. It's not meant to be cool. No, it's got, it's got Hyper Beam. He's a cool dragon. Look at Drampa for a second. Now that is a dumpy, jolly dragon. This is this is this is everything I would ever wanted out of like a what a a, 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 a jolly dragon should be. Look at this thing. It's called a placid dragon. He's just placid, man. He's just peaceful. But then he turns. Drampa, just like a grandpa, can absolutely turn on you. Listen to this. If a child it has made friends with is bullied, Drampa will find the bully's house and burn it to the ground. Why isn't this the most popular Pokemon of all time? Why don't we all have Drampas? Dragon Grandpa, Drampa, this thing is perfect. This is a perfect Pokemon and we're spitting on the franchise for, because we don't appreciate this thing enough. Everybody, you should love, go catch a Drampa right now. It's gonna burn down your bully's house. <laughs> Number two! Do you, ever, do you ever go to a cat shelter and there's this cat and you're like, if you don't cheer up, you're never gonna get adopted. That's Zangoose. This is... <laughs> This is another Pokemon that shouldn't walk on its hind legs. In fact, hold on, hold on, I got a Pokedex entry for this. Zangoose usually stays on all fours, but when angered, it gets up on its hind legs and extends its claws. This Pokemon shares a bitter rivalry with Seviper that dates back over generations. So let me ask you this. You ever seen a Zangoose on all fours? You ever seen a Zangoose with its claws retracted? No. That means Zangoose is always mad. This is an always furious little nasty cat badger who hates Seviper. He hates this one Pokemon. All of its hatred is focused on just Seviper for some reason. A, a bad Pokemon in itself. That's cool. This thing is fueled by hatred. Why don't we love this guy? 
Why don't we love this Pokemon who is so full of hate for one individual Pokemon that it's gonna walk around on its hind legs waiting for a Seviper to pop up? Stab it with its claws. It's cool. Number one! What if I told you there's a poison bag Pokemon? That's how it's labeled. It's, it's called the poison bag Pokemon. Wouldn't you think that's cool? Witness Swaylot. This is, um... I mean, it's definitely a goober. Look at its hands. Look at its big puffy hands, right? Look at those whiskers. Look at the, the black diamonds. I think those are added. I think they were added just to give it something. I feel like it was just a big purple puff. Somebody walked over to that designer's shoulder and said, add something. And so it's like, how about a bunch of black diamonds? Okay. It's a bad Pokemon. Look at its little kiss lips. Here's the thing. Apparently it can fit a tire in those little kiss lips. And then once something is inside of it, it doesn't have any teeth. Swallow has no teeth. It just uses its little poison acid inside of its big little Swallow belly and then dissolves anything. When you look at the value of something like Swallow, right, it's not cute. It's not cool. It's not friendly. It's not angry. It's kind of just a big puffy goober, right? It, it kind of feels like it's just there to fill out uh, look, we need a hundred new Pokemon. What do you have? Uh, a poison bag. But I think we need to consider Swellot a little deeper than that. This is a creature. Think of Pokemon in real life, right? We all watch Detective Pikachu trailer. Suddenly, Swellot's like, it's like creepier to me than any of the creepy Pokemon. Like this thing in real life, this thing is creepier to exist than any, like a, a, an actual scary ghost, right? I've never seen anything like this in real life. That would be terrifying. What are your black diamonds, man? What are you? And then you could just, like, it could, it could eat, it could eat something you love. This thing could just, in his little kiss lips, just somehow open it wide enough to put something you love in there, and that thing's never coming back. This Pokemon does not only need to be feared, it needs to be appreciated. And that's why it's number one on the top 10 most underappreciated Pokemon. Thank you. If you like this video, this is the only time we've ever done any video like this, but Easy Allies, if you liked this video, go ahead and check out patreon.com slash Easy Allies to see what the Easy Allies are all about. We do monthly countdowns. It's not always me shouting at the camera alone. I just feel very passionately about Pokemon that need more attention. It bums me out that there's just a bunch of these Pokemon hiding me out on the bottom of the barrel. Meanwhile, everybody's just like, oh, I gotta have Lucario. Shut up with your Lucario. There's a swell out out there. There's a go catch a drampa, you know? Uh, uh, back to what I was originally meaning to talk to you about. Oh, patreon.com slash easy eyes. Check those out. Uh, 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 and easy eyes.com for scheduling your time zone. Uh, thank you so much and see you next month. <laughs>